Okay, uh, assalamualaikum and a good uh, morning. So, welcome back uh, for another lecture. So, let me share my screen. Yeah, I hope you are able to see my screen now. So uh, let's go back to the whiteboard and uh, recall what we have done. Just hang on a minute. So, uh, recall from last lecture. So, last lecture we are looking at uh, essentially how we write down the partition function. For two particles. So, if the particle is boson, let me just rewrite what we had. Z boson and we have E minus two epsilon one KBT plus E minus two epsilon two KBT and so on. So this is uh, something like uh, uh, epsilon one here, uh, two bosons, uh, sort of uh, uh, occupy the same energy state, but you can also have the the ones with uh, the different uh, energy states. So that is given by minus epsilon one plus epsilon two on KBT plus E minus epsilon 1 plus epsilon 3 on KBT. So this corresponds to something like uh, this one. So you have uh, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3. So one is occupying uh, the lower state and then and the other is occupying the, uh, the excited states. And it goes on. Okay. You can continue if you want to. Right, and that is for boson and for fermions uh, is simpler because you cannot have uh, so this one not possible for fermions so the top what you call the top uh, line it's going to be absent for your fermions. But you just have the, uh, the other lines. Then on, so on, so forth. So uh, I'm rewriting this so that we can compare. Uh, let's move this thing up a little bit. So uh, remember how we have this uh, classification between fermions and bosons is due to uh, exchange symmetry. Okay. So in other words, uh, identical particles uh, due to the exchange symmetry, you will not be able to distinguish them. So let's consider, let's reconsider uh, the case of uh, distinguishable particles. So you can actually tell which particle is which. 
then uh, the two particle uh, so two particle partition function partition function is given by z uh, labeled by 2 here which we write as uh, denoting that the two particles are occupying some states and this is just given because it's distinguishable one could uh, essentially write it as a product Where is it? yeah it's a product of your single particle uh, partition function and there what happens is that uh, when you expand this so, so it's essentially this sum e minus epsilon i on kbt and then you square this uh, term so you always get your 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 terms with, with that okay so let me go down or up here so that in the end you get uh, this kind of uh, epsilon 1 kbt and so on and so forth and then you have the the one with uh, different uh, energy states epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 on kbt and then uh, e sorry there's a minus sign there uh, e epsilon 1 plus epsilon 3 on kbt but now because of the these are coming from cross terms okay the cross terms will have a coefficient the binomial coefficient which is not uh, if you look back in in both the boson case uh, for those uh, for example let me underline this for this epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 so it occupies those two energy levels uh, there is no factor of 2 here so here, if you look, there's a factor of two. So uh, you can see that there, there is a difference. And if you want to start from uh, this kind of uh, consideration, how will you get your Z boson or Z fermion? Let's, let's cons consider the case of Z boson, because fermion is a bit, uh, a bit more, uh, what you call, different from, from, from the, the other you know, the partition function thing. So, uh, so what one can do is to try to get rid of this factor of 2 and this, this is coming from your binomial expansion thing. So one, what one can try to do is to write uh, uh, set 2 with the correction of See what I've done. Yeah, you divide by two factorial, so that is uh, that will give us uh, Z two equals to half e minus two epsilon one. Maybe I should write this further down so that you can see. So, uh, make corrections. So, what do we do? We divide it by 2 factorial. Okay. So in other words, we divide the whole thing by 2 factorial. So you get uh, Z2 over 2 factorial is giving you half E minus 2 epsilon 1 on KBT. 
plus half epsilon minus 2 epsilon 2 kVt and then this now will become corrected now Uh, further terms besides the one I've written. Okay. So uh, now, given that this seems to be on uh, having the same uh, form uh, with the one on top, okay. But now, what happens is. Uh, unlike the 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 previous case uh, or, or the the distinguished part, particle case, here is a factor of one. Here is a factor of one. Well, uh, for the one the corrected version of the uh, two particle uh, partition function, you have a factor of half. So uh, no matter what you do, uh, you will not be able to transform your uh, partition function for distinguishable uh, particles uh, to the ones that uh, take into consideration of, of what you call the, boss, uh, the exchange sym symmetry. Okay? So you will not be able to reproduce. So this is a shame uh, because uh, distinguish, distinguishable particle, uh, what you call uh, calculation distinguishable particles are, are, are much easier and if you could uh, just begin from there then it would be easier okay so uh, how do we work around this uh, essentially it's the following so the work around is to say that so this is not a solution it's just uh, a, a kind of uh, a way to to say that uh, you can justify using this kind of correction okay uh, by saying the following uh, given that there are uh, numerous states Uh, for to occupy okay. then the probability of two particles occupying the same state same state it's going to be very small so this sort of uh, a, a rough approximation that sort of justify justify uh, for us to use the you no know, the partition function of the uh, distinguishable uh, particles okay So we can generalize this idea if we want for n particles, which is now even uh, harder. So n particle uh, partition function. So you could uh, simply okay. I think I did mistake. Uh, so the corrected let me erase this thing the corrected now is following so z2 after correction is z1 square divided by two factor okay so the uh, so the the idea now is you can have the n particle uh, 
partition function by uh, just uh, taking your single particle uh, uh, partition function which now is going to be uh, uh, to the power of n and then divide by n factor so that will simplify a lot of work okay? simplifies calculations so uh, let's try to do this to work out some uh, physical quantities so let's do the example of monoatomic gas better write slowly otherwise uh, this thing may hang uh, of uh, and then you consider uh, of how should I say uh, monoatomic gas of particles without spin well, we have not considered spin at all at the moment and without the rotational rotational and vibrational uh, energies So we, we so in other words, uh, these particles that do not have uh, structures. They are just like point, uh, uh, just like a billiard ball kind of thing. So uh, then you can uh, reduce this to the following. So this is the n particle function for this monoatomic gas, uh, written in terms of the single particle particle partition function which is uh, arising from the translational uh, motion okay so this has to be, to be taken to the power of n divided by n factor okay and uh, your translational uh, let me just write it down here then your translational uh, Partition function we have calculated before. Uh, where is it? It's L cube M K B T on two pi h bar square to the power of three halves. Okay. So we can uh, now use this to calculate uh, your free energy first your free energy is uh, F equals to minus KBT log now this will be log ZN let me push this thing up and uh, because ZN is uh, Z to the power of 1 sorry Z Z1 to the power of n okay, uh, divided by n factorial. So let me just write that down so, so that I don't forget. Now, because of the log, then you have the following minus kbt log of n Z1. Or Z translational, translational there. Uh, minus log of n factorial. The whole thing multiplies KBT here. And uh, now we uh, we use the fact that uh, we have uh, n to be very large. So let me write it somewhere else here. So log n factorial uh, in terms of uh, the approximation is, is going to be n log n minus n. 
Okay. So we're going to do this. This is what we call the Stirling's uh, approximation. So we include this inside here, and then there's a factor of, sorry, this is actually wrong. is n and log z translation okay so the the power goes outside the logarithm function so now uh plugging in the the sterling approximation then we have minus n k b t log of uh, z translational here yeah. and then you have uh, n log n here so n is already this uh, this is a common factor here okay that's already been taken out so that gives you minus log n uh, and that should be a plus okay, okay. now if you uh, further calculate uh, using the z translation given here then uh, l cube we can replace it by the volume okay. so this gives you the volume minus and kbt so here is a volume multiplies that so you get the uh, log of volume and then you have this the power of 302 so you can bring up the 302 in front so you get 302 uh, log of and kbt on 2 pi h bar cube and then what else yeah minus log n plus 1 so log v and log n we can combine that to be giving you the following log v over n and then, uh, yeah, and then that's it. Okay. So once you have the free energy, one could calculate other things. Uh, more important, um, most important in, in this in, in our discussion here will be the entropy. So the entropy in this particular case is given by minus of partial f partial t. So let's do that. And uh, first you take the differentiation of that t. So that gives us the whole thing here. K and k b of those in the bracket and then uh, whereas there's a, a, a temperature dependence that is over here so you need to differentiate that as well so now we have NKBT out front, so plus NKBT, and then you differentiate that, then basically you get the reciprocal of the one in the bracket. So that gives us, uh, so you have the 3 or 2 still, and then you have 2 pi h bar cube. Uh, I think it's h bar squared. Sorry, there are too many different formulas. That uh, 
yeah, square. Correct that. That should be a square. That should be a square. And similarly for this. square so that will be a square divided by mkvt okay this is differentiating the log okay and then you have to differentiate the thing in the bracket of the log so that gives you mkb divided by 2 pi h plus so if you simplify the whole thing and then combine them together so I'm not going to show the, all the steps so this will actually give us n k b log v over n plus 3 over 2 log m k b t on 2 pi h bar square plus pi over 2. Where does that come from? That is coming from uh, 1 over here and then this was simplified to uh, 3 over 2 uh, nkb. Okay, so you get a 1 plus 3 over 2 that gives you a 5 over 2. Now this is uh, an uh, a, a famous uh, formula called Sakur Tatro equation and uh, there's a few things that one needs to, to make some remark okay we have calculated uh, the case of this monoatomic mono gas before but uh, in that particular case, uh, uh, previously, okay, let me just write this down. Previously, uh, calculated entropy for uh, monoatomic gas. But uh, in, in that particular case, we have not considered the idea of indistinguishability. So here is distinguishable. Okay. So what's the difference between the distinguishable case and the uh, indistinguishable case? In the, indist uh, in the distinguishable case, this is now a factor of 3 over 2. Okay. And uh, the other thing that we had uh, for the distinguishable case, this log of uh, a log of v over n is actually log v. Now, uh, and we use this. We put capital N here, which is the number of uh, particles by hand. Okay. So in other words. Uh, the way we think of uh, the entropy in that uh, distinguishable case, we assume that okay, uh, that your entropy is going to be extensive, and we just simply multiply by n. But it's really not natural in that particular case because uh, one considers over here this log v is containing for the whole uh, system. But the one that you should be considering here is this. This is the volume occupied by a single particle. So this uh, what this uh, so-called formula of this Sacco tetra equation for entropy is uh, is is much more uh, what you call makes sense. So uh, 
all the things over here correspond to uh, coming from uh, the one particle case but you extend it by multiplying n outside okay so that is uh, i think the, the one important result so distinguishability and indistinguishability uh, produce different results and this can be tested experimentally so this has been uh, confirmed uh, experimentally yeah so you can actually uh, conduct the experiment here is a the case of krypton at boiling point okay. the experiment gives you this uh, much of entropy This is an experiment, and the theory is giving you using the supple uh, tetrad equation gives you one four five one zero six, which is pretty close. Okay, given the uh, what you call possible errors uh, that one can get. Okay. So that more or less uh, uh, sort of the things that we can see uh, so far uh, without considering spin. So let me, I suppose I want to erase this so that the memory uh, is freed up. So now what we want to do is, okay, we have not considered spin before this. So we would like to see what happens if you consider spin spin contributions so uh, so we need to consider uh, indistinguishability indistinguishability with spin and over here you see other kinds of effect coming in so spin in general, okay, uh, let me just, uh, I've already mentioned this before, your spin is like a birth mark. It doesn't arise from, from a, a kind of motion in space. Okay, uh, So it's just like a, an intrinsic quantity that the particle has. And uh, it can have uh, various uh, values, for example, zero, half h bar or one h bar three halves h bar so it comes in in, in factors of half okay? multiples of half okay but for the bosons bosons have integer spins so what does it mean by that is that it can have uh, spin zero spin 1, this is 1 h bar, and uh, spin 2 h bar, and so on. Okay, fermions on the other hand will have the half integers. So it begins with half h bar, 3 halves h bar, and so on and so forth. So, uh, and as, as I said, uh, this is important for me to write down. So the spin property, is independent of your spatial property. Or motion in space, for example. So in other words, your quantum states will be uh, divided into two factors. So quantum states, generally, uh, 
factorizes as follows. So you have the total uh, quantum state, and then you have a, a part that corresponding to the space part, and then a part corresponding to the spin part. Okay. So, and for the behavior of these uh, bosons and fermions, remember they are uh, they have special exchange symmetry. For example, bosons have uh, uh, the case of the symmetric one, and the fermions have anti-symmetric one. So let's consider the case of the uh, fermions. Will have uh, anti-symmetric. Not only just on the one factor, but for the for for both uh, for the total uh, quantum state. Okay, so that gives us this possibility. Uh, so in order for you to have uh, anti uh the total uh, the quantum state for the total case, okay, uh, you might have something like this, like psi space is symmetric then psi spin will be anti-symmetric okay so you get the product between the two to be totally anti-symmetric okay or you can have psi space anti-symmetric then psi spin will be symmetric. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, a drink. Okay, so let's try to demonstrate this a little bit more. So let's consider the case of, consider case of two fermions. <coughs> so, uh, and, uh, and spin half. So it's either spin up or spin down. Okay. So one has this possibility of uh, the following. So you have two uh, two fermions to consider whether it's spin up or spin down. You can have the state where you have both spin up. Okay. So this, so this is what we call chi one. Or you can have, uh, let me push this thing up. You can have uh, both fermions have spin down. So this is uh, sky tree. But you can have also things like uh, this, chi alpha, uh, which is spin up spin down and chi beta is spin down spin up but over here uh, it seems to to tell you that or oh, you can distinguish between the two okay particle one has uh, fermion one has spin up fermion two is spin down but in in reality you cannot have that distinguishability so you need to either make combination of this. So that gives you the this part chi two spin up, spin down, plus spin down, spin up. So if you swap this thing around, it still give you the same thing. Okay. And then you have another combination which is called chi four. Uh, 
and this is spin up, spin down, and this is spin down, spin up, okay, with a minus sign. Okay, so you can see that, okay, uh, let me circle this or underline this. This, if you swap them around, then you get the same thing again. So there's no change. So it's, this is what we call symmetry. Same thing for chi 3. And if you do uh, for chi 2, it's also symmetric. But for this chi 4, this chi 4 is essentially anti symmetric. So, there's, uh, remember that the, the, the spin states could be both anti-symmetric or, uh, both anti-symmetric or both, sorry, both symmetric and both, and, what am I saying, getting a bit of, it's either anti-symmetric or symmetric, okay, so that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, so, the symmetric case, write this in blue just to correspond that symmetric case has been one uh, to understand this you probably need to uh, to learn at once quantum mechanics you can actually show this spin one and then uh, this forms what we call a spin triplet. For the anti-symmetric case, this gives you spin zero and it forms what we call a spin singlet. Okay, <clears throat> what's important now is to understand that you can have these both cases uh, appearing for your spin states. So what's, uh, what's the case generally, the fact that you have these two fermions, the two fermions must be having, okay, let me go back here, two fermions, must have anti-symmetric psi total. Okay, so in other words, he can accommodate both symmetric and anti-symmetric spin states. The only thing that you need to make sure is the spatial part will corresponding will correspond to a different symmetry. So in other words, let's just write those down. So for the um, let's take the case of the symmetric case, symmetric spin state. Okay, which is uh, can either be chi one, chi three, or chi two. So uh, collectively write this as chi i there. So uh, you can uh, the the two fermion uh, total state okay, psi one two here will have to be coming uh, in this particular form where your spatial part <coughs> your spatial part by i x one for example. And then you have another one, phi g x2. This will have to be anti symmetry. Okay. So this will multiply your chi i. 
or you could have the anti-symmetric uh, spin state so that will be chi 4 here and then this one will be symmetry So it really dictates, uh, you know, the the spin and the spatial parts are somehow uh, they ha they have a relationship between each other. Okay. So now let's consider what would happen if you uh, have a exchange symmetry of fermions inside your, you know, uh, say some uh, physical uh, particles okay so let's try to do some example here so let me push this thing out so uh, usually what happens in, in so let's consider uh, consider solids and uh, you have atoms over here uh, arrange in lattice and let's consider the atoms are heavy heavy atoms will be localized at the lattice side will be localized At that is signs. So in other words, that is sorry, that is signs. So in other words, your spatial, uh, spatial uh, wave function of the atoms. Spatial, sorry, spatial. Uh, will pick. At lattice and decay exponentially, decay rapidly beyond that. So that would actually uh, uh, sort of say that the the atoms are going to be just you no know, sitting there on the lattice side rather than you no. Know, uh, start to move around uh, on the lattice okay so uh, in this particular case uh, one can consider for example of solid or liquid helium and they exist in two forms <coughs> So they have this uh, four helium case. So the four is coming from the four nucleons. So two protons and uh, two neutrons. Okay, and and the nucleons are of half. Oops, what did I do? Again. See, so I have to make this commands again. Oh dear. Okay, I'm having problem with my uh, tablet again. Uh, 
Okay, maybe, maybe it's time to take a break so that I can work on my tablet to solve that. So let's take a break for five minutes. Is that all right? Okay. <clears throat> Can we restart? So, okay, uh, let me go back to the where, where I stopped just now. So, over here, uh, each of this nucleon okay, is going to be of spin half. And because of this uh, even number of nucleons inside the nucleus, this will give you a sort of a, a bosonic nucleus. Okay. So uh, there is another one which is having uh, helium-3. It has three nucleons. In this case, really, uh, it's, a, it's a two protons and one neutron. Um, all of them are spin half. So the combination over there will will give you a fermionic nucleus. So under this uh, sort of uh, condition, you actually find uh, an indirect what you call behavior uh, from the spin. So you have uh, so helium-4 has different behavior than uh, the helium-3. Okay, so you can think of this uh, when when it's sits at low temperatures, uh, I can't remember which one, uh, there are some sort of uh, superfluidity kind of uh, uh, behavior that actually occurs for the case of, I think it's helium-4, if I'm not mistaken. But helium-3 will have some other uh, exotic uh, properties. Okay, So I have to look, at, look up you know, uh, what's the difference between the two. But uh, it, essentially, these are coming from uh, is a you know, the collection of four helium uh, nucleus and the three helium nucleus. They will have different uh, statistical mechanics behavior. So this is rather a qualitative uh, kind of argument rather than having a specific thing. Uh, the, the theory behind this is a bit more detailed than I can give now. So uh, let's move to another uh, theory, uh, another case, another example. Is when you have molecules with two identical particles. So, in this particular case, again, uh, so you have uh, two particles here. You might have another particle inside here, but essentially the identical one is sort of sitting on each end of this molecule. Okay. So, what's going to happen in there? There will be an exchange uh, symmetry. So, you have a rotational symmetry. about of uh, 180 degrees of pi radian. Okay? So you can swap these two around. And basically because they are identical particles, you will not see any difference between the two uh, states of the, that particle, particular molecule. Okay? 
So and and this has uh, so probably I will need to go to the the, the idea of angular momenta here. Uh, let me just see. Yeah. So the rotational thing is when it says rotational here, that means this is coming from the spatial part. Okay. Well, so when you do the permutation between the two identical particles, it actually involves the spatial rotations rather than the speed. Okay, so that will have also some consequence. Okay. So let's uh, see what does it mean by having this rotational symmetry. So that means what do I need to do is let's let's say this is the origin here, okay, and then uh, you do this rotational symmetry. That means you take from R, so the position of the uh, the uh, one of the atom, the identical atom, should go to minus R. Okay, so this is the exchange. Uh, identical particles so uh, really what one needs to see is in the context of angular momenta this corresponds to uh, changing uh, so, so this okay let me write this in terms of your x y z first so this goes to minus x minus y minus z but for uh, like polar coordinates so this is r theta and phi so this will go to uh, r doesn't change but the angular uh, angles angular uh, variables will change and how can one understand this is the following so remember, uh, theta is the one that, that tells you about, so this is z axis, okay, so that's suppose theta is here, so this is the position of the uh, identical atom, so it needs to be, so this is say plus z here, has to go to minus z. So should be uh, somewhere over here for example in terms of the z coordinate so if you think of it, of what the, the angle is supposed to make uh, the whole thing here is pi 180 degrees and then this angle has to be the same as this angle so in other words uh, if I do this Okay, this will be pi minus theta, which is that. Okay. Uh, for the other angle, the other angle is going to be this. So you have, for example, here x and y here. So suppose uh, the one the, the identical atom is over here. So this is, uh, let's say this is x, y here. So this is phi. Then it should get uh, the other uh, identical atom should be here, which is minus x minus y. Okay. So over here, if you look at this uh, angle over here, Okay, that would be pi plus d, pi plus pi. Maybe I should do a different. So this angle is pi plus pi. Okay. So in other words, that uh, gives you that particular. So what happens in this uh, exchange of the two uh, particles and the two atoms in the molecule, then uh, this will be reflected in the uh, 
we find the spatial part spatial part to look at black knots uh, so what happens in this particular case is that uh, the angular part of your spatial wave function is given by I think you have done a uh, quantum magnet so you should know this is given by spherical harmonics and uh, it's denoted by YLM so if you exchange the particles then uh, you you are considering this instead pi minus theta pi plus phi and then you can look at the form of this function of spherical harmonics this will actually be related in this way to the spherical harmony at theta and phi Okay. So in other words, exchanging the two uh, identical atoms in the molecule uh, will actually have this property. Okay. This change of uh, like a wave function. So uh, an S orbital, for example, S orbital would have L S orbital is really L equals zero state. Okay, so then you have minus 1 to the 0, which is just 1. So this corresponds to a symmetric uh, spatial state. But if you look at the p orbital, so let me put, push this thing up. So the p orbital, on the other hand, corresponds to the l equals to 1 state. And this would have uh, a change of sign over there, because minus one. So this gives you the anti-symmetric uh, spatial state. Okay. So this has some consequence. So let me look where it is. So, okay. So let's consider uh, an example of CO2. Okay. So you have uh, the uh, oxygen atoms uh, playing the role of the uh, identical particles. Okay. So what's going to happen in that particular case? Uh, See, your O atoms, remember, uh, O atoms is really 16 O, there's uh, 16 nucleons in your oxygen atom. Uh, let me just check what that is. Yeah. So this would have a uh, spin zero. So this would actually, in this particular case, uh, this will be a boson. Okay. So in other words, the wave function, the total wave function, because it's a boson for the two of two O atoms, should be symmetric. And if it's symmetric, then uh, when you no, uh, in order to have a symmetry, this thing has to be even powers, okay? Minus one to the L must be plus one over here. Then you have your L to be even. Okay. So there you can see 
immediately when you talk about a rotational partition function, you are going to be limited uh, to the following uh, sum. So here is a sum of uh, even L, uh, 2L plus 1. Remember the, the partition function for rotational uh, motion uh, is going to be E minus H bar squared L, L plus 1 divided by 2I moment of inertia times kvt okay so you can see that there's a significant thing uh, uh, due to exchange symmetry now you might ask what about spin but the spin is zero okay, in this particular case so you 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 will not really uh, when you can uh, ignore the spin part Let's move to another one which has contribution of spin. So that will be the hydrogen molecule. Now the example is the hydrogen molecule. Two H atoms identical. Now What's in the nucleus of the, the hydrogen atom? Well, it's just the proton. Proton has been half. So in other words, what we have in this particular case, uh, one would actually have an anti-symmetric, because this is a fermion, one should have an anti-symmetric total wave function. Okay. And in this particular case, uh, uh, remember uh, the, the, the discussion that we had before. So there are two possibilities. So the two possibilities are the following. Possibility one spin state is anti symmetric. So this is chi four, for example. Then uh, your spatial state. In order for the, uh, the total wave function to be anti-symmetric, your spatial state has to be symmetric. Okay. So again, in this particular case, uh, the symmetric case will correspond to L equals 0, 2, and 4, and so on. Okay. And this uh, kind of states, uh, with this spin state being anti-symmetric, uh, the the hydro uh, the hydrogen uh, state hydrogen atom state okay, is called uh, what is it uh, para hydrogen para hydrogen So that's the first possibility. Second possibility is spin state is symmetric. So this can be uh, chi 1, chi 2, chi 3. Then your spatial state has to be anti-symmetric. So in this particular case, then your uh, 
rotational angular momenta thing will have odd numbers, three, five, and so. And this hydrogen state is called It's called autohydrogen. Now in the book there is a picture where you can see uh, uh, how this different states comes about. So let me just uh, make this remark about partition function over here. So partition function of normal hydrogen. Yes. So this would be a mixture of both uh, the para and auto states. So it would be, uh, have the partition di uh, function to be divided by 2. So let me push this. So you have uh, two parts of it. First is the, the case where L is even here. You get your 2L plus 1 and then E minus H bar squared LL plus 1 on 2I KVT. And then you have another one for the odd case. So this is again the same thing. But because of the odd case correspond to the symmetric spin state I K V T because there are three different symmetric spin states, then you have this sort of spin degeneracy factor outside. Okay? So one can calculate the, the the sort of uh, what you call quantities which is related to rotational motion uh, through this partition function. So let me just open uh, that figure from, from the book. Give me a minute. What page is this? So let me just try to jump into page. Control two. Jump to the page seventy. So here is a picture of your heat capacity.
So you can see over here, uh, uh, remember the normal hydrogen is essentially a mixture, but one can also see uh, uh, it's plotted over here, the contribution of your para uh, hydrogen states. So uh, before, I think it's, what's the, yeah, below 50K, around here, uh, they are uh, probably, probably above that. Okay. Oops, sorry. So somewhere 50K, so below 50K, uh, both your para and uh, normal hydrogen, uh, which is a mixture, will uh, coincide the curves. This is essentially uh, specific heat, sorry, heat capacity. But above 50K, uh, then uh, you see some difference because you start to excite your rotational states. So you can see the, the normal hydrogen which is mixture is giving you this kind of uh, uh, curve but if you just consider the para uh, hydrogen state then you have this kind of peak and then somehow your auto uh, hydrogen state sort of you know, uh, probably is below that so sort of giving you the uh, combination uh, of curve giving you that normal hydrogen state so that is more or less I think uh, all the things that should be said in this particular uh, chapter of the book okay uh, we have another around 30 more minutes so uh, maybe I can start move into uh, the next chapter because we need to finish at this until chapter 10 so let me try to do that in fact uh, the, the, the next chapter is really a, a kind of uh, revisiting some of the things that we already uh, mentioned before which is on the case of Boltzmann and Maxwell distribution now uh, Maxwell actually uh, sort of uh, first formed the uh, this is 1859. Found uh, a distribution of velocities. For particles in the gas. Okay. Uh, by ana analyzing their collision process. And then this is followed by Boltzmann. Which is in 1877. And then he formulated uh, kinetic theory of gases. Uh, from atomic point of view. And then uh, sort of uh, re-derive, uh, reproduce uh, Maxwell's. Where is it? Reproduce, better not write too fast, reproduce Maxwell's uh, distribution. So our aim here is essentially we want to do that. Okay. So how do we do this is again uh, to use a kind of uh, 
uh, partitioning the, the, the space of states into uh, you know, some lattice kind of thing. So let me just write down, okay, so what do we do in this particular case? Uh, recall uh, particle in a box. Okay. So in that particular case, what we did was to write the states as the following, pi, x, y, z. And then you have these states, a sine, n, y, pi, x, over l, sine, n, 2, pi, y, over l, sine, n, 3, pi, z, over l. Uh, we want to generalize this a little bit. So, generalize. So, here is a box of equal sides, length L. So, we generalize it to any box. So, box of sides. LX, LY, and LZ. So again, you have some states sort of generalizing the one on top. Okay. You have NY pi X, LX, N2 pi Y, LY, N3 pi Z, LZ. And these states will have uh, the energy levels, the eigen energies for these states. So let me push this thing up, which is given uh, again. It's just a generalization of what was uh, done before, which is h bar squared pi squared over two m and then n1 squared over lx squared plus n2 squared over ly squared plus n3 squared over lz squared. Okay. So the idea here, uh, later on we want to introduce uh, the momentum vector uh, which was uh, mention a minute. So here the partition function, uh, now we are considering the case uh, without rotation and vibration. So the partition function is like before, instead of L cube, then you have Lx, Ly, Lz, and then multiplied by this factor that we have derived before. So the idea, remember our, our aim in this particular chapter is to uh, reproduce Maxwell's distribution of velocities of particles. Okay, So this is uh, the aim. So how do we do that? Again, we start with Boltzmann's idea. So you have uh, probabilities. probability of finding a particle in a single particle state, one particle, particle in single particle state, it's given by uh, pi equals to e minus epsilon i kbt on your z. Now uh, we will do some kind of, remember that this is probability of finding one particles. So we will do some approximation. Of probability 
of finding n particles. Okay, uh, so and this n particles occupy the uh, single particle states. So what do we have in this particular case? The approximation is just to multiply this probability of finding one particle by capital N. And we call this an I. Now this can only be an approximation, okay? Because uh, uh, otherwise you might get a number which is bigger than one. If you know. so, in other words, your n here has to be quite low. So this would be good for uh, low density gas. At high temperatures. So if it's high temperature then this this number will be uh, quite small as well. Okay. So okay, so let's try to uh, proceed and hopefully we'll, we'll stop in another 10 more minutes or something like that. So uh, how to find uh, the distribution of, of velocities? Well we can start with something we already know in quantum theory that we look at momentum okay and momentum is related to velocity okay momentum is given by p equals to h bar k where what is k k is what is called the wave vector And a uh, wave vector is coming from where? It's coming from this. So let me just write this thing down. Uh, I'm not sure I do this. Uh, so maybe I need to Px, for example, equals to h bar kx, where kx is from the earlier. Uh, factor that we find inside this okay uh, which is pi n1 over lx i was informed that you have not done uh, you have not really gone through some idea of dimensional analysis so here's a good place where you can see the dimensional analysis your n here is just integer pi is just constant then uh, your l here is a dimension length so your k here has dimension 1 over l okay so i hope you have done this kind of thing so similarly for py and pz so in other words uh, this k that we we write can be formed as this vector here and they will actually have to define your velocity later on so since k is uh, so what we do is to uh, imagine a space of points of k okay. and then uh, this is equivalent to uh, to the momentum space so you have done uh, momentum space in in quantum mechanics uh, so one can get a momentum space by using a Fourier transform uh, from the wave function, for example. Okay. So, but now mind. I mean, these are extra things that you might see the connection between all these uh, different topics. 
So, okay. Uh, so, this is sometimes called a case space. Uh, the case space and momentum space are related to each other. Okay. So, uh, what we do in this particular case is to form a lattice in your case space. So, to, in order to form a lattice, then you need a unit cell. So, your unit cell will have a unit cell volume. is the smallest uh, cell, smallest volume that the, the no, that a single particle state can occupy, okay? So this is given by pi cube over Lx, Ly, Lz. Okay. So this is just coming from your n1 equals to 1, and n2 equals to 1, and n3. So, uh, oh, there is a picture of this. Okay, maybe I should look at the picture. Because the picture will actually helps a lot in, in, in describing here. So, this is a case space thing. So you're going to discretize this by no uh, lattice of of this kind of uh, picture shown in this picture. So there's a grid that, that gives you the k point. Okay. So this is almost like uh, things that you see in solid state physics. Okay. So your density of points in this particular space. Oops. Density of points over here. is given by L x l y l z divided by pi q okay. so we will actually employ this to to uh, to make uh, uh, later on we talk about density of states okay and then uh, multiply with the probability so that uh, you get uh, this uh, so-called Maxwell uh, distribution of velocities. Okay. So I think I want to stop at this juncture so that no, uh, probably uh, no, otherwise I have to repeat this again. So I will stop at this uh, picture of this. Okay. So this is case space. Okay, uh, let me uh, go back to you and download for the attendance list. Okay, uh, that's it. So, uh, perhaps later today I will give you the assignment and then you can start uh, doing that and uh, when to submit is probably uh, can you try to submit by Tuesday so you have at least one one whole day of Wednesday to look at the solutions is that okay okay so uh, so uh, the next the test will be next week, so on the Thursday, okay? So, okay, that's all for today. Thank you, everyone.